and welcome to this week's episode of the Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, did the social media stuff, yep, very, very much appreciated. Um, if you're obviously new to the channel, um, please hit the subscribe button because that would be really cool. Um, I don't get any brownie points or extra pats on the back for having loads of subscribers, but it's kind of cool to see the subscriber count sort of keep ticking up. That's that's really nice. Um, yeah, so last week's episode of the show, yeah, I thought it was a, a good episode of the show. As, as I said, you know, I, I do like... Uh, Glenn Cadam and Tom and Tall got a nice thank you email from um, from Ben. Um, nothing else from anyone further up in the company, but uh, I suppose uh, if they're not saying shouting at me saying you're talking crap, then everything's cool, isn't it? Anyway, on to this week's episode of the show. As you can see from the title page, uh, we're looking at uh, the distillery that's literally a few miles up the road um, in Derbyshire. It's the the, the White Peak Distillery. Um, and um, it's taken me a little while to collect enough samples together um, to do an entire episode of the show on the distillery. So a big thank you to Kane from the distillery for kindly uh, uh, putting up with my constant, please send me a sample, please send me a sample, you know. Um, and I mean, you know, I've obviously had a few samples over the period of time and shoehorned the odd one into uh, an episode of the show. I think I did a, I think I did an English episode not so long ago. Uh, but anyway, I ha this is the first time I've had the opportunity to do an entire episode of the show. And I've got a sample of new make, which is really, really cool. I mean, you know, it's like, I do ask a lot of people if I can get samples of, of their new make, but of course, as you well know, many distilleries are very, very kind of loath to sort of uh, let anyone take a look at sort of, you know, the, uh, the raw material, shall we say. And, you know, um, to me, it's, it's always, um, uh, it just gives a huge insight into the, the character of the of the spirit, you know, because there's there's no no other aromas or flavors cluttering it all up. You are purely tasting the spirit. All right, it's very young, but it's the DNA. And w part of the reason I asked for a sample of the new make is because one of the samples of the bottlings that I'll be tasting today is is called Alter Ego, and the, the big thing about this is that they decided to move their cut points. Now, um, it's not unheard of for a distillery to do something like that. It's very unusual because obviously, as I say, your cut points and where you start are such an important part of, of the whole concept of the distillery character. I mean, you know, so you, you look at fractional distillation. So you, you, you take your first cut point at what? 68 75 percent some somewhere around about that point um the idea obviously you sort of run off the four shorts you get rid of the, the methanol the hydrogen sulfide the sulfur dioxide all those horrible sulfury nasty smells and flavors that you really don't want in your spirit i mean um it's not the end of the world if they do get into the spirit i mean obviously some uh spirits you know, the, the more meatier styles you know darwini and um uh, mortlach and those kind of of spirits that deliberately want that kind of uh style of spirit as long as you leave it in the cast for long enough for the, the wood to basically sort of draw out all of these sulfur compounds absolutely fine but of course you know in nowadays um everything has to be sort of like you know out as soon as it's kind of old enough to be sort of called whiskey not that i'm saying that's a criticism but um you know nowadays there isn't the time to sort of like stick your, your whiskey in a barrel for 15 or 20 years um you know that that just the viable there's no viability there no no and and it's all about yeah, money to a certain extent i mean yes you can set some of your casts aside for that kind of length of time but you know you really need to sort of tailor your cut points and then well, it's far back. and your fermentation. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you want a nice long estuary fermentation. I mean, um, as far as I'm aware, um, the, the the distillery has a moderately long fermentation, 96 hours. Um, so it's moving into the sort of like the the sort of estuary end of the spectrum. It's not maybe quite as long as as some. Um, but then, you know, we're, we're not sort of, they're not after that sort of overt Glencademy kind of 
big sort of estuary fruit, they still want to retain some of the sort of the, the, the more barley character. Um, so, you know, like I said, you know, all of these kind of things that they, that as, a, um, as a distillery that you do, all, all has a knock-on effect to the overall distillery character. So, um, obviously coming back to the, 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 the concept of um, with fractional distillation is, with the alter ego, what they decided to do was to basically shift the cut points down, if you like. Uh, now, they didn't tell me where their cut points were and where they moved them to. Um, again, you know, distilleries are secretive about this kind of thing. But essentially, so by moving your first cut point down, you know, further towards the sort of like, you know, 68, 65 uh, percent, you are sort of totally sort of taking out any of these kind of sulfury compounds and you're into essentially the middle cut you're into where you get all your lovely sort of fruity esters you know your, your, your pear your peach your apricot all that kind of stuff um, but you are obviously moving by moving that sort of um, final cut point further down in towards the, the 50s you are sort of what well, you are getting the the, the the phenols and things like that obviously a lot of the peak phenols do come through right towards the end of the, the, of, the of the distillation um, and you get that sort of lovely kind of ashy cigary sort of tobacco-y leathery kind of compounds kind of coming through but you also are playing around with a lot of acids, things like palmitic acid giving you that soapiness, uh, isoveric acid, hexanic acid, all these horrendous acids that you really do not want in your final spirit. Um, and the trouble with those is that the wood doesn't always get rid of them all. Um, you know, the amount of times I've tasted whiskies that have this kind of soapiness um, and, and, you know, sort of cheesiness uh, and it's just that's those acids just will not bloody well come out of the spirit you know you could probably leave it in a cask forever and a day and they still wouldn't come out some do obviously um, but the point being is by moving your, your cut point further down into that into effectively the faints you really are playing with fire here so anyway the sample of new make that I have is the old cut points. Um, I mean, I would love to have had a sample of new make from the new cut points to sort of like do a, a real comparison between the two, but unfortunately, beggars can't be choosers. As they say, you ask for a sample of new make, you get a sample of new make. You know, well, <laughs> not as the case may be. Um, but it's going to basically, I'm hoping by doing sort of um, the alter ego, the second bottling after we do the sort of Caduro, which is to a certain extent their um, standard bottling should we say you know predominantly str cast a little bit of bourbon um, and hopefully by the time we, also the point is with with the alter ego they, they opted for less str cask as well i mean this is something i've been saying about um their spirit that I, that I hope and I believe this is the plan that as the spirit continues to mature then the amount of STR cask used in the bottle in the, in the vatting will basically decrease um, because it doesn't need quite so much um, uh, STR cask to add sort of any complexity hopefully the spirit will have developed enough complexity to not require that um, but anyway, so apart from this being a great episode, because I really do love the distillery, it has to be said, I, I, I think they're doing some, making some amazing spirit. Um, it's also going to be a real interesting curio uh, to determine how much influence, how much difference the changing of the cut points has actually made to the final spirit. Because obviously, as you know, you can get lots of, you could probably pick up an inordinate amount of difference between sort of two samples of new make, but once you start throwing in all the oak character and all that kind of stuff, it does lessen it a little bit. So, um, like I said, I think this is going to be a, a really, really interesting episode of the show, and I've not tasted all of these uh, against each other, so I'm, you know, this is a kind of a new one for me as well. So, anyway, i um, going to stop waffling, um, and let's start the experiment then. Okay, so we're going to kick off with the new make spirit. Now, this is 55% ABV. Now, um, I didn't ask whether this had been cut. I'm 
going to have, uh, you know, whether this had been cut to sort of like get bot uh, casking strength um, or whether this was just the, the ABV, the, the overall ABV that the uh, new make is coming off this, the still at, you know, when, when it's all been collected. But um, anyway, 55% for that. So as I said earlier, we're going to look at um, the kind of standard bottling that they've been doing now for, um, well, they've been releasing for a sort of a couple of years now. I mean, when did they first start? Oh, February, February 2, 2022 was the first release. Um, so, uh, yeah, just over sort of uh, well, a year and a half. Um, and so this is the Caduro, bottled at 46.8%, and like I said, uh, STR casts and X Bourbon casts. Then we're going to move on to uh, the Alter Ego, as I mentioned, um, the different cut points uh, uh, and more Bourbon casts, less STR casts. Oh, uh, and uh, for those of you that don't know, they do um, peat their barley, but only very, very uh, slightly. I believe uh, peated to, I think it's six parts per million. So, um, you, one can argue that you know by shift, when they're shifting the cut points uh, if they are trying to get more of the peat character sort of into the final spirit why not just peat your barley a bit more but then you're kind of compromising the, oh, the, the, the style per se because you're basically too heavy on the on the peat you know it's it's, it's all a balancing act and of course once you once you've kind of set your stall out to produce a certain type of spirit and you have fans of that certain type of spirit if you just sort of you know, decide to go off in a completely different direction. Um, you know, you you may well end up losing sort of customers and and and, uh, and fans and all that, which is obviously something that you really don't want to do. Um, then we're going to move on to uh, bottling from um, earlier this year, February of this year. This was the uh, Double Oak Port at fifty two point two percent, and it was basically. Um, aged in first fill bourbon and then finished off in uh, X port casks um, so yeah I think that will be quite interesting slight sort of different take on the sort of standard and um, we're looking at uh, the, the last of the whiskies is the current uh, I think it's batch two isn't it uh, I think of, of necessary evil uh, this is bottled at 51.7% um, so it's a standard spirit, um, aged in X bourbon casks and then finished in um, X stout casks from uh, Thornbridge Brewery um, and uh, it spends about eight months in there. Uh, said casks from Thornbridge were, uh, I believe, uh, XPX casks. So um, quite interesting to PX and stout character. Um, as you can see, the colour is quite light. So um, I'm hoping that uh, it will be quite nicely balanced uh, and not too overly um, over overly oaky. Uh, and on to the final bottling of the day. This is not a whiskey, <laughs> and it's that's <laughs> not what it's called. It isn't actually whiskey. This is it's rum. It's cask aged rum. So this is batch number two, stroke twenty three. Um, the spirit was distilled from uh, molasses and um, powdered sugar cane apparently now that interesting story with with the powdered sugar cane is that it came wrapped in cellophane um, blocks shall we say looking like a certain illegal substance uh, I believe that um, it, the parcels weren't actually opened by uh, UK customs which is probably for the best because they probably would have thought that it isn't what it was stated but anyway um, so yes so uh, made from molasses and powdered sugarcane aged in X bourbon and X virgin oak cast bottled at 45% uh, so looking forward to finishing on that so um, I must admit that um, I always feel a bit kind of nervous when it comes to English rums because uh, as of yet I haven't tasted an English made rum that really has kind of uh, made me sit up and go yeah that's kind of good stuff most of it is probably is down to the fact that it's all been bottled at far too young an age uh, that's the, the biggest issue I've had with uh, English made rums um, or that they like what was that what's that one burning barn oh dear god I mean yeah all right it's it's 
had sort of smoke blown through it and they've chucked no ends of spices at it and all this kind of stuff I think um, but it's so one dimensional just just like a lot of the spice drums um, but anyway I'm, I, I'm di digressing there obviously uh, this is how this is yeah, pure rum you know this is not sort of been mucked around with so um, anyway uh, let's uh, start the tasting off with uh, a little bit of new make then shall we Okay, so on starting off with the new make, let's see what the nose gives us on this one, Joey. I mean, I put it in the black glass because you, you can see what it's it's colourless, so it doesn't really matter. Very clean, um, quite cereally. I was expecting more esters. I mean, there is an esteriness there. There is pineapple, apple, apricot, but it's quite subtle. Um, There's a nice level of peat actually for six parts per million. It comes across quite intense. Uh, I mean, this is not obviously not a sort of like you know an odd beggy kind of level of, uh, of of peat intensity, but there's a nice earthiness there. There's a maybe a, a little bit of manure possibly. There's some sort of almost kind of gin like botanicals as well. Um, it's a nice spirit. It is. It is very clean. And it, it, like I said, it sets out what they're trying to achieve. They're obviously trying to set out um, a fairly barley-centric spirit with an element of fruitiness. And um, like I said, you know, and, and this is a sort of like, you know, I'm not getting a sort of huge amount of alcohol either. It's actually, I mean, although, yes, it's only 55%, but he says only 55%. Um, yeah, I mean this is this is good new make, and really good new make. Let's see what the pass like. Cereally, oily. There's a nice fattiness to the, um, the the spirit, but again, some lovely estuary notes. A little bit more noticeable esteriness, esteriness. <laughs> um, a bit more pineapple, apple, apricot, um, a little mast, but it's got a sort of a pleasant le length, um, even at th this, you know, young age, um, I think it's got a, a, a lovely character to it. Um, nice maltiness on the aftertaste, maltiness uh, and barley, the barley is kind of sort of sort of starts and, and, and kind of bookends the, 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 uh, the, the spirit to a certain extent. Um, sort of opening with the barley, then sort of moving into the sort of fruit, fruit, fruity esters and then sort of coming back to the barley. Um, there's a little bit more of an off-the-still character to, to the palate. Um, but again, like I said, really, really clean. Very, very clean. Um, I certainly don't get any sort of... There's certainly no cheesiness or, or, or sort of sweaty socks or sort of sulphur notes whatsoever. Right, so... There was a little soapiness now on the nose, I will say that, but I mean, it's not anything to get really bent out of shape about. Um, it hasn't changed it a great deal in actual fact. Um, there's a, a little bit of almost kind of herbal potpourri, possibly... And a, and a sort of feeling of pepper it's not really I don't think it, it's not really black pepper but it's got that kind of intimation of kind of, of, of pepper um, that's nice I mean again like I said it, there's a, a little bit of and you know it's a little bit of soapiness but you know it's it's kind of um, it's not going to sort of deter mar anything certainly I don't think in any any shape or form let's see what like Possibly not so estuary, a little bit more noticeable peat in actual fact. Um, actually quite quite a lot of noticeable peat, um, lovely earthiness to it. A um, little bit drying, it's short, it's new make, it's not going to be sort of like you know, an incredible length to it. Um, but again, like I said, it perfectly sort of like shows uh, what the distillery is, is attempting to do. Um, and it's just very, very good. I 
Okay, so let's move on to the Kaduro. So 46.8%. Let's see what the news goes on this end. Quite a bit of oak in actual fact. Um, quite a bit of bourbon oak. Um, creamy. It's got a sort of um, almost kind of smoky bacon kind of note of this red wine notes as well um, rose petal barley vanilla there's a I, I'm kind of getting a little bit of estriness um, but it is kind of quite hidden under all this oak um, I mean it's very clean again I mean it's, it's got a lovely intensity um, and I mean I like the progression I like how it sort of opens up on the oak and the sort of like the, 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 the kind of um, estuary fruit kind of does kind of start to evolve and come through a little bit of banana melon hmm I mean that's a nice nose um, but it is kind of banking on quite a lot of oak character to kind of um, add to the complexity which is not not a sort of a criticism at all um, so we'll pass one Quite a bit of tannin, quite drying on the finish, um, but it opens up quite nice. I'm getting that kind of hickory smoked meat, um, raspberry jam, um, and barley. Barley moving in on the mid palate. Barley, a little bit of estuary fruit. Not a huge amount of estuary fruit because the tannins from the STR cast do kick in fairly quickly. Um, wood smoke, peat. Um, I like the edginess to it, I like the verve, um, it's a touch on the short side, like I said those tannins really do kind of dry uh, and although it's you know pleasant level of alcohol you don't need to add any water to it, I love the spiciness, I mean you know it's got a, that's, that's the kind of trade off with, with sort of STR casks, um, you can get quite a bit of tannin but you do get a lovely spiciness with them, a um, little bit of almost chocolatiness uh, on on the aftertaste um i mean that's a lovely whiskey it has to be said um but as i said you know it is relying quite heavily on the oak to um give it the complexity but you know it's not the only whiskey in the world that, that, that does that um so kind of on its own yeah that's that's a really good whiskey Okay, so let's move on to the Alter Ego, 51.1%. It's lighter. Um, it's a little bit more aromatic. Um, yes, the, 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 the winey red fruits are less kind of um, tannic. Um, it's less intense on the peat as well, which is wasn't expecting that. I was expecting more peat. You know, you're taking the, 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 the later cut. Um, maybe the peat is possibly a little bit more herbal in character possibly um i'm getting less of that sort of um smoked uh hickory woody kind of character um it's certainly got a lighter feel to it uh and yeah there is a little bit more emphasis on on the estuary fruit again the oak is there um not so creamy not quite so intense um I would have to say a better balance of oak character, um, a better balance possibly all round. I mean, it's still relying on the oak, obviously, to generate that um, complexity, but it's nowhere near as, as, as overt uh, as it is on the Cadero. A little bit of charred wood, but yes, it's the lightness, it's the, dare I say it, almost sort of elegance. I mean, um, that is possibly the most noticeable difference between these two uh, two whiskies. Let's see what pass on. Mm. And again, the balance on the palate is absolutely lovely. Again, lighter in style, less smoky, less hickory uh, smoked meat. 
um, more barley, more esters, more fruit esters. It kicks off with the the barley, the American oak, um, and that moves into that lovely succulent fruit mid palate. There's some str tannins and spices that do come through on the mid mid to finish, but they're nowhere near as intense as on the Caduro. Um, and in actual fact, it 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 allows the spirit to be a little longer. It lasts that the aftertaste is is uh, you know better than on the Caduro. Um, and overall, it has again a lighter touch and feel to it. Um, I don't think it really needs any water, but I will put a little drop of water just to see what that does to it. Um, Mm, that's brought out some almost honeyed notes. Um, again, so a lot less STR, more juicy sort of fruit, more barley, but it still has that edge to it. Um, it's not a sort of a, a Mac Myrie or a Glencadam estery fruit bomb. Um, it has its own character, which is what you want, you know. Um, and maybe it does reflect its 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 building. You know, the, you know, the distillery is housed in an X, XY works, hence why it's called Y works. Um, you know, they, they want to maybe a sort of a little bit of an industrial feel, but obviously not a Deanston like industrial feel, should we say? Um, thank God. Um, mm, lovely aromatic quality, really very, very good. Let's look past one. Again, quite light, a little floral, it's just a, a little a fleeting soapiness that just kind of comes there and right on the on on the sort of not quite the aftertaste, sort of mid finish, I guess. Um, it just sort of flashes through and you just go, hmm. Um, but overall, I like it. I think it's a great whiskey. I think it has a lovely lightness to it. I think on this tasting, I would just not bother putting any water with it. It doesn't really need it. It's 51.1. It's not sort of like, you know, it's not a, a mega car strength sort of behemoth. 51.1 um, is quite comfortable. You can quite easily sort of drink that without water, in my personal opinion. Um, and, um, yeah, nice. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the double oak port. So initial maturation in both bourbon and uh, first fill bourbon and uh, uh, refill bourbon before finishing in port cask. The port cask influence is quite noticeable. Um, aromatics, slightly spicy red fruits, touch of black fruit, earth, spice. A little bit of oak, uh, vanillins, a uh, little bit of almond, possibly. Um, again, heavy on the oak. Uh, I'm not getting a huge amount of distillery character. I'm not getting a great deal of fruit. There's some barley notes. It's got a lovely aromatic quality to it. Um, it's got some. It's got a juiciness and intensity. Uh, you can smell the port, which is, you know, handy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's nice. But, you know, it it doesn't have the elegance of, of the alter ego. Um, again, we're sort of back to more more sort of uh, cask-orientated aromas. So, sort of pass right. Tight but juicy. Oh dear. <laughs> Ooh, no. Mm. No. No. We're not going there. Um, yeah. There's definitely a tightness. Tightness from the tannins and the alcohol, um, making the fit. The, the it quite it feels quite mass, although it's only what fifty two point two. Um, a lot more port character. I'm definitely getting the sort of like porty red black fruits. Uh, a little bit of jelly. Um, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of barley, but again, we're looking at sort of predominantly um, uh, port character. Well, I mean, you know, it is it is what it is at the, at the end of the day. Um, 
I'm not saying, although it's not hugely alcoholic, the combination of the alcohol and the tannins is certainly drying the finish and um, we'll put a little drop of water with it and see whether that kind of uh, opens things out, shall we say. It's wonderfully juicy. Um, oh, stop that. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so lots and lots of almost pithy raspberry, um, red currant. It's also brought out the American oak again. It's, it's emphasizing the oak. Um, yeah, but I can smell some esters. I can smell some fruitiness. I mean, you kind of have to dig and you have to go looking for it. Um, yeah, you, you, it's not sort of like um, something that you're just going to casually pick up on. You've got to kind of just almost ignore all the oak character. Um, and there is some, some lovely estuary fruit just there. Um, mm, yeah, the, I think the water has kind of brought a little bit of a better balance to, to, to the whiskey. So let's see what pass on. Juicy, chewy, lot longer, lot less kind of um, tight. Um, there's some tannins there, but the tannins have softened quite nicely. A um, little bit of spice, red fruit. Again, all right, we are more in the oak end of the spectrum as opposed to the spirit end of the spectrum. Um, but it has a nice kind of feel to it. I like it. Um, I... I, I <laughs> keep coming back to the alter ego and, and the alter ego is just such a fabulously balanced uh, whiskey it really is but you know the the, the double oak port is as it says you know it is kind of it is in the older sort of style of um their their bottlings in with the emphasis more on to the oak and hopefully you know the alter ego is now kind of a glimpse into the future a slightly less oaky future, possibly. Right, okay, so uh, on to the last whiskey of the afternoon, but not the last sample. This is the Necessary Evil. Oop. Oh, dear me. Portwood coming back at me. Um, let's see what nose gives on this end, shall we? Oh, that's a lovely nose. I, I, I love stout cast finishes. I love stout, it has to be said. Um, so I'm kind of a bit biased. Um, chocolatey, stouty, treacle, dried fruit, a little bit of vanilla. Again, we are in the oak end of the spectrum. Um, but there's, there is some barley notes coming through, a little bit of estuary fruit, apple, pineapple. Hmm. I mean, that's a lovely nose. I love this nose. This is gorgeous. Um, I mean, it is heavy on the oak, I will admit that, but I just love the stoutiness. I love all those stout characters. I love that sort of, you know, treacly, sort of chocolatey, dark fruit. Um, and the balance is okay. I mean, I'm not going to sort of say that this is far too, too, too much into the... And I don't think any of the bottlings have been... Caduro, possibly, a little bit heavy on the oak. Um... And, you know, I don't want to sound sort of condescending, but, you know, um, if you start off a distillery, you know, you, it's a learning curve. You know, you may well be the sort of, you know, have a lot of experience with distilling and, and wood and all that kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a bit of a sort of, you know, it's a learning curve, I guess. But I like it. I love the nose. Great nose. Let's have the pass up. Edgy, chocolatey, stouty, treacly, dried fruits. Mm. Again, quite a bit of tannin, masking the finish. Um, there is a little bit of estuary fruit kind of comes through on the mid palate. Um, it is in the Caduro y kind of mould, in that there is a lot of oak character, but I'm just getting the feel that there's possibly a little bit more spirit character coming through. Um, 
lovely spiciness on the finish. I mean, again, it's just that wonderful kind of sort of emphasising the sort of the alcohol, emphasising the tannins and um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I I like it. It's lo lovely whiskey. It has to be said. Um, more malty. It's kind of the, the the cast notes have kind of dialed down a little bit now. Put a little drop of water with it. More barley. It's kind of maybe brought out a little bit more of the peat in actual fact. Um, more of the, it's basically sort of just, just realigned the balance of, of, of kind of oak and spirit to a certain extent. I mean the stout is now in the background which is, which is kind of how I would, I, I would prefer things it has to be said but hmm. This is the lovely thing about sort of, you know, bottling at cast strength, and that's a big, big hats off to the distillery. You know, we're talking sort of, you know, allowing the customer, you know, to, to basically customise the spirit to their own particular sort of palate. I mean, you know, one person may well prefer it neat, one prefers person with a little drop of water. It's just, everybody's different. Let's see what the palate's Soft, malty, still quite stouty, but again, um, getting that lovely sort of um, estuary fruit on the mid palate. Mm, not quite so drying, lovely length, um, chocolatey again. Yeah, like that. That's that's good. Good whistle. Right, okay, so let's move on to the rum. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's intense. That's quite herbal, almost uh, quite sort of agricoly, but not quite not so medicinal. Um, dried fruit, sort of creamy oak. Lots of oak again. Lots of charred oak, vanilla. But it's got a lovely fleshiness to it. I'm getting sort of banana, apricot. Um, it's a big bold nose. I mean, it's kind of. Pseudo Jamaican, I guess, in that sort of broad, fruity kind of style. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. It has to be said. I mean, you know, th this is probably the first English rum that I've tasted or knows, shall we say, that hasn't made me go, oh dear God, you know, it is. It's oaky. I'm getting lots of sort of, you know, sort of vanilla and sort of coconut and that kind of stuff, but. Yeah, it's got a nice fruitiness. It's nice and robust, and there's a slight agricole note which kind of cuts through. So it's kind of, um, it's actually pretty well balanced, I think. Let's all pass on. A little more agricole on the palate herbal agricoli notes but then the oak comes through creamy vanilla um charred wood again that sort of lovely kind of rummy sort of um almost kind of tropical fruit sort of uh, apricot sort of melon pineapple um it's a real kind of like backwards and forwards between the sort of like the wood and the uh, the, the spirit i mean it's kind of wow yeah, I mean, this is the, the the first rum, English rum, that I've ever tasted, that I've gone, I like this. Um, most, like I said, most English rums just kind of leave me cold, you know. They, I mean, this is young, admittedly, but it has some complexity, it has some balance. I like the interplay between the um, the spirit and the oak. Um, it's a bit oak heavy-ish, um, but, you know, that's the kind of the price you're going to pay, I guess, for you know, releasing a relatively young rum. But it kind of fits in the whole kind of profile of, of, of the distillery, I suppose. So, um, yeah, nice one to finish with. Okay, so let's on today's episode of the show. Uh, firstly, a uh, big, big thank you to um, to Kane and to everybody at the distillery for, for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, I 
you know, I, I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the, the sort of the fact that, you know, so many distilleries will kindly send the samples. The new make just gave me just that sort of insight into the, at least <laughs> what the character of the spirit was, what they were trying to achieve with the, uh, uh, with their sort of distillation. And certainly, you know, you could see that in the Caduro, although there was a hefty, hefty amount of oak there and it was, although a good a good whiskey very much in the oak end of the spectrum alter ego on the other hand was hopefully the future of, of where white peaks are going because it was really lovely balanced it was lighter less reliant on the oak um more of the distillery character it kind of to a certain extent reminded me not in flavor profile but it reminded me in style of the the virgin oak finish that they did which kind of gave me the first insight into the character of the spirit and you could sort of go oh i can see some spirit character here and it's not all about the bloody um str casks you know uh and i like i like that i think that's great and if this is the future of of the the distillery i think yeah they're going to be releasing some bloody good whiskey um the uh the the, the double oak port again was kind of like a throwback I mean, it was very heavy on the sort of like the port finish the, 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 and and again, sort of relied fairly heavily on the oak to give it the, the character. Pleasant whiskey. I mean, I, I more than happily drink that. I mean, you know, just very kindly sent me some nice big samples. Take note. Um, the Necessary Evil, again, slightly heavy on the stout cast, but again, a lovely, lovely whiskey. I really like that. And the rum, or like I said, it's the, the first English rum that I've ever tasted that uh, I've given a thumbs up to and would actually want to put on the shelf. So um, in all of that, I think um, <laughs> pretty damn good tasting. So if you've never bought a bottle of Wireworks from the White Peak Distillery, I would suggest you do. And I would suggest you buy a bottle of the Alter Ego. Bloody good whiskey, that's all I can say. Until next week. Good afternoon and good dreaming.